Okay, back with the live stream. Hopefully, no more technical problems, but anything can happen, so we'll see how it goes. Now, as I said earlier, we're going to look at painting snow color and two light effects and the cool shadows and then an overcast light situation where the shadows change a bit and there's a different atmosphere entirely from that warm light situation. So I'm going to cross over to the easel and we're going to have a look at the reference I'm using purely as a guideline and the colors. And then we'll jump in with these two color studies and try and illustrate the two light effects so that you can try them out for yourself. All right, let's have a go. Okay, so there we can see the reference I'm using. And there's some light coming through the trees, a bit of light on the snow as well. Now this would be a sort of warm light situation. And then the next one, I'm going to show you the cool light uh, of an overcast day. So what I'm going to use for colors, fairly typical palette, but I'm adding one extra color. Let's go through that. We've got some titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, and the one I've added is cobalt blue, which I regard as my coldest color. Lemon yellow, some orange, some red light, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna. Okay, so two little uh, paintings on this. It's just a, a painting panel, and I'm going to divide that up. And what I'm using for brushes for the most part is number eight bristle brush. And I'm painting with oils like I'm doing here, I only use bristle brushes. If I'm painting with acrylics, I'll use synthetic brush. Uh, bristle doesn't really work well with acrylics and, and water. And synthetics don't really work well with oils and solvents. So keep those two sets of brushes handy. All right, um, let's now have a look at painting number one. So I'm going to do some warm light coming through these trees and then we'll get into the shadows. So what I prefer to do is since the sky and the sunlight behind those trees is quite warm. I'm going to try and make the most of that, almost a sunrise or sunrise or sunset situation. And because that sky is taking such a big part in this, I'm going to start with the background of the sky. i roughly get an idea of the horizon line. I'm going to just have that bit below center and Put the sunlight over there in a sort of um, rule of thirds, as it were. And just start with the brightest sort of core of the light. And then go into darker yellow as we proceed from there. Because what's going to happen is as the light moves away from the source of the which is the sun it's going to get slightly cooler and cooler and get darker so let's put that down and from a deep yellow we go into almost a, an orange more red. You can see the light behind the trees turns orange to red a lot quicker and cools down very rapidly. So 
I'm going to get in some alizarin crimson as well in the cooler darks. But up in the sky, warming up from the center and cooling down as we go. And then cooling down quite substantially as the light heads upwards and starts getting into the blue. Now bring a bit of cerulean, a bit of white, a bit of yellow, and we get almost a green color. And as it moves away, it becomes blue. which is, of course, the coolest color. And we have that sort of gradation or diffusion of the light. So this is the background. The trees will go over this. And we're just building up the painting. And the cool color, you can start using burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and get the coolest shades right over here. All right, this will start making sense as we start bringing in the trees. So, and these will have a few strong dark shapes for those trees. There's a nice one over here. Just bend the tree around, just move it. Don't make it perfectly straight. And we got some darks over here. And I'm using some burnt sienna and it'll just mix in with a bit of that yellow already. And that sort of natural light effect already starts taking place. This is just setting the scene for our snow. We'll get to that shortly. Let's just get some dark in here. All right. These very sort of diffused tree trunks and tree branches. We just need to suggest those. Don't worry about too much detail. We'll describe all of those as the painting progresses. So don't worry too much about it. Just sort of rough that in. And then there's some thinner branches. Coming along here, now these are getting a lot more light and some of them almost disappear. These over here going over the sunlight are getting affected by the refraction of light around the thin stems and branches. And as I said, some will 
even seem to just disappear as the light envelops around it. So you do that same thing and you can create that sort of feeling of the light going around the trees. Right, now I'm going to go back into the sunlight. I just want that strong core of bright light. So we'll drop in a few brights in there and get a, a deep yellow as well. And just by cutting in a bit, we can develop those, those colors even further. All right, so that is the source of light. Basically, warm light. So how's that going to affect the snow? That's the big question. All right, the basic rule is where the, the light is warm, shadows become cool. If you can distinguish that color temperature, you'll be able to really communicate the light so much better. Um, we've got to try and do it with paint and that's difficult enough. So let's try and get some really cool shadows. And because it's snow and cold conditions, it's almost like the air is like fridge-like. So I prefer to use cobalt blue, which to me is a very cold color. You can also add some alizarin crimson to it and develop it as you want. So if we've got some trees over here, let's get those shadows. And we use the cobalt blue for that. Now at the base of the object, the shadow will be darkest. And as it moves away, more light is filtering into those shadows and the shadow will get cooler. It could even be influenced by the warm light and start going a more violet color. Blue shadow with yellow light or orange light can even turn a grayish color because we're talking about a complementary color situation. Blue shadow influenced by orange light, blue and orange are complements and they'll start graying or neutralizing. Not the best description of neutralizing. No color is really neutral. But it knocks back the blue substantially. So you want to describe the cold shadows in snow in warm light you're going to use very cold color for your shadows. And cobalt blue is my go-to color for cold shadows. I'm going to put a bit of cerulean in there and just a little bit of alizarin to get a dark at the bottom. Let's just say we've got a really dark shadow, a large shape, maybe a tree just out of sight on the left, casting some shadows over there. All right, so let's keep putting some shadows in. And these darks over here, you can actually cool them down as well because they're also shadow colors. And you can drop in some cobalt blue into those darks over there. Let's make a few more dark shapes here to suggest tree trunks 
in joining up with our shadows just a bit clearer. You can see those quite strong darks, a few little dark accents in the landscape as well. Maybe rocks, maybe some tree trunks or tree stumps showing through, things like that. Okay, so that's the shadow coming on. And we will just lighten up the shadow in the foreground. And make sure it's nice and dark, closer to the object casting the shadow. Now we can have some cools showing through, but lighter ones where there's light reflected off the sky, showing off some of the landscape around. But I'm using now white and cobalt. And white is also, titanium white is also a cool color. So you can use that mix just to suggest a bit of information behind or the trees or in between the trees. All right, so what about the light now, the light objects? because it's warm sunlight. Let's just bring a bit of that forward. Right, so it's warm sunlight and clear sky, warm sunlight. The snow in light is going to be warm. It's getting all that warm sky reflection. So we can use white, titanium white, some of lemon yellow. You can drop in a little bit of blue if you like and just test that out. Is that warm enough? Actually would like it just a bit warmer. Even a touch of orange in there. I think that's better. Now we've got beautiful, warm light. And what I enjoy is that contrast between the blue and the warm color. That little touch of orange just acting as a complement, making the blue really stand out, seem extra cold. And in the lights, I'm dropping in quite a lot of paint. You can keep your shadows thin, but your lights, your warm lights, you can get in some nice thick, juicy paint. So a few little light spots. These little sky holes will actually be darker. There's less light showing. So you can use oranges for that. Let's get a bit more blue in to those shadows. Soften up the edges of your shadows as well. Here we go. I'm just gonna lighten this shadow a few little suggestions of light and coming through the trees. And just because I really enjoy that orange and blue, I'm actually going to throw in a few sparks as well amongst these trees. And 
bit of touch of light. Let's get that shadow. What I want to avoid is shadows that are too um, spaced out too evenly. So shadow light, shadow light, and we get a sort of too much of a stripe effect. And you may just want to adjust the shape and just break up that effect a bit. So it's not too staccato. All right, so that is roughly the effect of warm light on snow. Cool snow shadows, warm lights. Now, let's have a look at the situation where the light is a bit warmer. And by that, I mean warmer in the shadows. So how would that happen? To make warmer shadows, we need cooler um, primary light, right? The sky will be cooler. And this typically, you'd find this on an overcast day. Now, if it's lightly overcast, the sky is still quite bright. So there'll still be shadows, but they won't be as cold because the light of the sky is not so intensely warm. So let's try that again. This time, the reference actually much closer to what we're aiming for. And the sky is now somewhat grayer. Let's make the horizon a bit further up there. So we have this sort of lightish gray sky. And you can get that with, let's say, orange and a little bit of cerulean and white. And just adjust it. Blue. We don't want that green. And we want it slightly warmer. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna. And we got this. Warmish gray. For our overcast sky. And our trees. All right, so we've got this overcast sky. Now we can actually make some slight adjustments to the shadows. And they can be a little warmer. It's not a dramatic change. I'm not going to be using reds and yellows in, in the shadows. But they will not be as cold, not that cold blue. So I'm using, I'm using blue, I'm using a bit of orange, a little bit of burnt sienna and white, just trying to get the value, the light and dark as correct as I can. But I'm not using a lot of cobalt blue. And violet is a nice color. You can use a warmish violet as well. Cerulean, cobalt, a little bit of alizarin, touch white, just a little bit more alizarin to warm it up. That on. All 
Okay. So hopefully you can see already that is warmer. We just want to make sure we get the value still quite dark at the base. Let's try and get the light a little light over here just to suggest where the sun may be trying to get through. Violet, such an important color in landscapes. Purples and violets, use them wherever you can. Let's bring a few of these to the foreground. And a few twig-like sticks. Let's just give some information. Now the branches are also getting the light refraction effect, but I'm going to use a lighter violet because the sky is so much cooler. I don't have to use oranges and reds to suggest the refraction of light. I can use light violet. And that will have a similar feel to it. All right, roughly put that in so we can get to the snow. But I just want to I just want to get one little bit of impasto over there where the light is strongest. Okay. So the light is strong enough to still cast shadows. That's important. Um, not entirely overcast, we're just getting um, some shadows coming through. So the shadows are going to be, obviously they will be darker than the light on the snow, but they're not going to be cold blue. I'm going to make them more a violet, almost a gray. And then you can lighten that gray violet as the shadow moves away. So I can use Alizarin crimson, cobalt blue, a bit of white, and then something else, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, touch of orange, to gray down that color. I'm not trying to make mud. If your color gets to be very dirty and muddy, just add a color back into it and bring it back into a colorful gray. There is a big difference between mud and colorful grays. All right, so as we move away, the shadows can lighten up a little and become a gray violet, gray blue violet. 
there's a lot of light. The shadow can even get into a very soft, coolish violet. As light warms up, shadows cool down. Still in the shadows, but with more filtered light coming through over here. But we're still within the violets and not that cold cobalt. Now, one thing to remember is that when a shadow falls over another shadow, it basically it disappears, right? You can't see shadows in shadows. So if you got something like this, make sure you're, if you want to see the shadow, you're going to have to put in light in between Okay, let's get that. And that's basically just blue bird sienna. There's a bit of that alizarin in there. Let's just join it up with that. Let's say there's more light coming through. So this shadow becomes very light violet. Soften these edges a little. Let's just put a few. Sky holes. I just got to get that right. So shadows over there, shadows there. And okay, now let's put a bit of light in. And as I've shown you already, fairly straightforward. It's lighter and warmer than the shadows, of course, but there's still not that intense sort of strong yellow and orange being reflected off the snow. It's going to be that more overcast light of the sky. And not as warm. So I'm still using a bit of yellow. I've actually put in a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow and titanium white. I'll drop a touch of blue in there. A few sky holes, which will be a little darker. So quite a big difference between cool light and warm light. Very cold shadows in warm light, warmer shadows in cool light. 
And that's roughly um, something to, to keep in mind, even when you're doing summer scenes, shadows are going to be cold. Now that you can be expressive, you can push the colors a bit more if you want. I like to, I like to really emphasize the cold blue against the yellows and oranges, but this can also make a very pleasing, uh, gentle light effect, very calm. Let's pop a few, a few little brighter lights, but still within the scheme of this light effect. Whatever you choose, whatever light effect, just keep your values correct. Your darks must stay dark. You may just need to reestablish a few of those darks. Okay, so that's it. Um, try out your different light effects. Now when you go out and you look at snow, you'll see that effect of light, the warm light, cool shadows, cool light, warmer shadows, and uh, how it influences everything. I think let's just get some tape off here and perhaps we can just see it a bit clearer. Should I get my palette on? Last one. Quite different, um, but easily done with the same colors. The important thing is just to look for those colors and then mix your paint accordingly. And uh, have fun, have fun exploring different light effects and the different colors that you can achieve with those. All right, well, let's have a look at a few. Uh, Cynthia, great to see you. And uh, Wildflower, Joel. Uh, hopefully some of my friends in Australia are still up and they can watch this as well. Or just look out for the recording coming up later. And if you want to join me for more live videos as well, I've got a live channel um, on my painting school. Have a look at that as well. And we do monthly uh, live meetings and critiques as well. So you can check that out. That's a membership uh, platform and uh, quite a lot of fun. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great Christmas or um, whatever holidays you're celebrating and uh, have a great new year. And uh, hopefully I can do another one of these uh, for new year as well. All right. Thanks very much for joining me and uh, cheers for now. All right, before I go, okay, Astrid, thank you. Kerry, thank you very much. All right, good. Thank you. Have a great time. Keep safe. <laughs> Keep warm if you're up north. Okay, John, just got here. Um, I think this recording will be on YouTube by tomorrow. So if you want to catch up with it, then you can do that as well. All right. Cheers, everyone. Enjoy your painting. <laughs>